Hi, Robin. Um, I want to share with you what I um, what I have come up with as as far as uh, a structure, um, a guide, a civil guide for what could be um, encouraged by the law instead of the law obsessing with abortion and and what we do to the mother with the mother or for the mother and obsessing on abortion um, my philosophy is more one of trusting that conscience has a way of in in our species has a way of socially panning out and eventually bringing us around so you know i'm against decarceration and all that i think that for example if you um basically to make it short and so i can get to the i can get to it um if if instead of like throwing you in jail because you were speeding um you you keep being you continue being contacted by different levels of of administration first by the mail and you know and then they they kind of like uh maybe they'll uh they'll say if you don't pay we'll take your license away and uh, you won't be able to drive a car and if they catch you driving instead of throwing you in jail they take your car away and um, the sort of passive trust in that we actually want to be socially ordered and harmonious with the collective deep inside as our prime desire um, is a different way of going about the law is a way of saying well you know eventually people will get it and they will rectify themselves and and want to be like the rest because the governing force is us wanting to be accepted included and in one of the collective and so if you harness that natural yeah. ultimate force a person will you know will weave and try to turn left turn right and see how long they can get away with whatever but eventually they come around because nobody wants a difficult life uh, and we all want to be proud of building uh, a sensible life and so I have a passive attitude a, a very um, a nurturing kind of instructive educative uh, philosophy towards the law and so this kind of mentality in me has and then when I started like you want to you want to see where Kalila is she's right there <laughs> say hi to Robin, Kalele. Kalele, say hi to Robin. <laughs> um, so this is this is cra it's, it's a little crazy. It's a little unusual, and people don't know. They think it's extreme, but it's actually the prem the 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 idea behind it is that it will make for a society to be more mature and responsible about our children. And you know, if if we deposit are uh the best in our children that means that we will be the best right whatever we do to our children what you know if we only aim for our elders and our children um everything in between well you know i don't want to go on tangents here but anyways so the idea would be that if for example a girl gets pregnant um it is the, the state expects the father to be um you know let's say she wants to have it she doesn't want the baby um it, it would happen in a society where you can't just lose sight of who you conceived uh, a child with uh the father would have to you know you let's say the girl wants to ask permission for an abortion in a country that does not automatically give abortions um which is not saying no to abortions or, or condemning or punishing and making it illegal but it is saying that we're not going for a yay or nay and we're not uh, making the the issue a matter of facilitating abortion we're going the opposite way where we don't like abortions we don't want them to happen but nature also has given women this ultimately this responsibility which is kind of a, a beautiful of response it's sort of like nature or god has entrusted woman with the preservation of of the species and evolution it's beautiful if you look at it that way and it explains why there are um things that are so powerful and it's like you don't know how but you just know what to do and all of a sudden you're protecting and nurturing and 
um, that 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 pregnancy and that baby and when the child is born all these magical things wake up um, in you and so and, and so there are there are people who talk about their doctors and psychologists who talk about a lot of women in the West think that it's just a, you know an easy thing you go to the doctor and afterwards they have all sorts of psychological situations and this happens because uh, the woman has evolved to uh, to uh, uh, do this to to uh, procreate life to give life to uh, uh, protect and, 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 and make sure that it happens that it's not interrupted that nothing gets in the way that it, it shoots forward in, in evolution and so if we look at it this way as, as per evolutionary design which so often agrees with uh, with uh, religious uh, scripture but you know obviously in a whole different form of, of, of uh, language then um, the woman would at the very least need to say well you know if we bring the father into the thing and say well do you agree that um, this abortion should be had you, you do not want the abortion you do not want the child then both parents facing each other or facing uh, facing together the authority of the of the state as to what the state will make available not for punishment or anything but just for acknowledgement and responsibility and accountability uh, then we are allowing the the best that may be um, salvageable in our nature to perhaps break through and say okay i'm going to rise to the occasion or maybe they both agree that they don't want this child in any case um, th since the abortion is not what is encouraged um, the mother will most likely is the one that will be closest to saying well you know if it has to happen i will i, I will be the mother now it may be that um the father says uh, she doesn't want the baby apparently but i did want it if she had told me and this has happened in society where a woman has hides the fact that she got pregnant and then got it aborted and what happened would have the dad had known he said oh, wait a second i wanted that baby and so this is where my my different approach comes in it's if we look at nature as also the man's accountability and responsibility for the raising of a new citizen and and his part in society and so forth and his responsibility towards the woman and the pregnancy and everything it may be let's say that that man already naturally will be calling upon on his desire to be a father and maybe the mother most unlikely uh, of, the, of, of the two which would be the most unlikely to to not uh, want to be a dad or a mom would probably be the dad right but let's say that on those rare occasions it, it's the other way around and the mother really does not want the child maybe she doesn't love the man at all and she just did it because she's dumb and she just you know to, but she can't connect she can't make that connection because there's so so much rejection towards that male that she can't wake up any sort of empathy for that baby being knowing that it's his but he really does want it the state law would be structured in a way that would say okay we're gonna make you comfortable make you go through this pregnancy it's your pregnancy it's your body you will uh, be totally mm, uh, humanly and sensible and medically and legal in every way support your pregnancy and since you don't want it the father will raise it and also we will encourage as make available and encourage the, the the presence immediately of a mother that will be the baby's mother and so the expectation of the state is that the two human beings would be mature and knowing that the baby first of all the baby needs to be raised by a mom and a dad and so however they work out this um this non-desiring the baby uh maybe it stays only with the dad maybe maybe it stays with the mom there will be a mom and a dad for that child and um you know and if uh, a, a woman is held uh sort of there would be exceptions where the baby can be aborted perhaps and we should perhaps acknowledge that we are also our sciences and so if we detect that there's a malformation see that's where it's not exactly always in line with some maybe some would say this sounds like a catholic belief except for that weird part about 
the dad, uh, the dad's importance in the pregnancy. But then I also believe that if a child is born, we can tell that there's a defect, um, perhaps there are, that is going to render him in a wheelchair for all his life. I don't think so bad about abortion. It, I see it always as killing, but then you think of a paraplegic in a bed all his life, and I add all that suffering to the suffering of killing, and you know, and we may invent better drugs where the fetus goes to sleep. If we put dogs to sleep, I don't understand why they have to tear up the baby in the mother's uterus, but in any case, um, so a society would could be civil in its way of in, uh, helping along a society that is mature and accountable for the duty of uh, of being responsible for our pregnancies, and that doesn't mean that that preg uh, abortions would be punished, or that the mom, the mother, is obligated. She, <laughs> she there is an obligation, but see the point of this uh, restrict this uh, defined area of obligation concerning both parents, but in the case of the phys physical effort, is, it is a mother, has to do with making a society that is. Uh, that thinks about it when they're going to have sex, you know, that you think, well, you know, this is an important thing, and that will get translated, that gets translated into a society that's responsible for itself, for its children, because it doesn't just end there. If we are people who are serious about conception, it means that we are that way about everything else that concerns uh, social and family issues and, our chil and chil issues about our children. So the part that a lot of uh, abortionists or what have don't realize is that law is also about um, making um, a, a, about educating, about forming, about giving shape to society. Because perhaps it sounds like abrasive uh, to a society that has been having cheap, easy, over-the-counter abortions for the last fifty years. Um, but if you look into the future in another 50 years, we will be a different society because we understood and guided legally our society differently for 50 years and our children will be different. We won't be so discarding and so cheap about sex because it is something, if you go to societies, uh, for example, Catholic societies and, and um, in, uh, in, in the more educated areas of, of some parts of the Catholic world, you'll find youth that, in, in America too, you know, that they're very precious about their first girlfriend, their first boyfriend, the first time they have sex. It doesn't mean that they have to get married. It means that they're just sl going slow about it. It's not like, okay, I, I, I did 20 guys this week, woohoo, I'm really popular. That happened because we have a different mentality. I'm not saying that that happened because we have had abortion for a while, but kind of goes hand in hand, and abortion was easily made uh, legal in America, perhaps because we're already having that attitude about our children, instead of a more cherishing attitude about how we're raising and more, uh, more attentive. Um, individualism has done, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just arguing a little bit about individualism, these days, and I'll cut it short now because I realize it's getting too long, but um, one thing I realized, and I, I saw this video about psychology and how it seems that many thinkers believe that individualism is our most, our latest advancement in social psychology, that the, the, the rights of the individual of self-determination and freedom, and it's interesting because it was kind of left there by this video I saw, and, um, and then I, I realized some of the things that we, in some of the ways we've been careening on with uh, gender ident identification and abortion and a bunch of things. And I always listen to the reasoning of people. I always listen to why they believe or what their logic is, even though I hear it being echoed from what other people also misbelieve and then being repeated and taught and repeated. Um, I also um, kind of see where, what led to those conclusions, those aired conclusions, 
and I see their, their departure points. I, by listening to people, I can kind of understand where those departure streams of logic started. Um, and what, I, what I'm starting to see now, this is like my latest thing, is I'm, I'm seeing that individualism, because what we have never really considered is that everything we think, whether um, we believe about social philosophy, understanding of society, and even the way our language gets built, nothing really becomes verified or any of any significant substance until we bounce it off others. And nothing becomes real until we confirm that indeed it, 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 uh, it executed that function. So I can invent a house, but until that house, I haven't seen that house, that structure hold families and raise children and stay there over a long time, it won't, it won't become a, a structure of hum that humanity builds. Uh, like words, you know, we can make up a sound, but until it becomes used and versatile and different conversations by several people, it doesn't really earn its, its significant. Everything that humanity does requires a collective to validate it, other people. And so understanding anything, homosexuality or abortion or anything, you needs to, its logic needs to ultimately find uh, the confirmation in each of its, each, uh, of its steps through a collectivism, not individualism. And so it's almost like the collective or the human the social um, environment has produced the intelligence in the, uh, and the philosophical intelligence of individualism. But uh, when it started thinking and saying, well, because I, can, I have the freedom uh, to do what I want, I can also, uh, I have the freedom to, I don't know, walk around uh, naked, let's say, um, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a, tying my, my, my penis, with a, taping my penis down and pretending that I'm a woman with a bra or something, and just walk naked that way on the streets. And, you know, individual, individual rights, um, individual freedoms would say, yeah, you have the right to do that. And that's kind of what it does, right? But then it completely generates an ignorance towards how that affects others. And that's where individualism fails because we are naturally uh, more um, constructing through and through community and collective and, uh, and at all in all generations comments that uh the grandparents will make to the parents about how they're still teaching them how to raise their children their grandparents their grandchildren i mean and and still talking to their sons and their children will ask questions and they will learn from what is answered uh, by their uh, elders and other strangers and their parents will uh, their ideas will be formed i mean the collective is growing as that individual is parading a certain way uh, sending uh, ideas and uh, and maybe becoming teachings depending on how it's interpreted by the people that explain that behavior to the children and so there is no accountability there's no connection between that the actions of that individual you know Sexuality is learned by all of us, and and the the bare, the 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 blunt truth of that is is verified when we are growing up as children. Something about nature makes us not be so interested in learning about our sexuality from our parents. We go and find out by talking to other people, our peers, what they have done in their in their experiences, looking at magazines. And we learn from the world about our sexuality, and then, then we sometimes we we test our parents or we uh, go home for certain questions or certain things. But in reality, the tendency of the species and that makes all the sense in the world because sexuality is about mixing with strangers so that our DNA gets shuffled in, and so right away there is a tendency in sexuality to send us to uh, get in, to learn and to ask questions and to. Um, be influenced by external 
So it's all about group influences. So if, to say that our, indiv our sexual statements are all about the individual rights of, of freedom is completely ignoring the, re the biological reality that our sexuality is learned through the collective, most importantly and most broadly, uh, shaping what we believe and how we should act sexually towards others, right? Um, so individualism has, is, is doing a lot of damage because it is purporting these ideas that may actually uh, need to be substantiated in the collective or in collectivism or in social understanding uh, uh, group interactions, group dynamics, what have you, and they're becoming professed by people who have the tendency to always validate things through listening to others and believing uh, the collective. And so co in the collective, we find individuals making statements about individualism, and then they become adopted in a collective sense. So in other words, a bunch of people uh, making collective individualist ideas that never took into consideration the collective. And so these new ideas are going out into instructing the collective or society, but which by nature were generated by individualistic thought. And so uh, they are instructing the collective to behave as if uh, each person is uh, not connected to others, but it's all about what you do in, in, in a vacuum. And uh, in, when you go and look at a lot of things that are happening, like in sexual dysphoria or the belief about, for example, that a, a woman, women are fanatically insisting, it's, it's my body, it's my body, and nobody else has anything. To, it's everybody's baby. It's the man's baby, too. You know, how, where, how did you get that way, right? It's all this individualism has has created ideas that are now being disseminated in the collective, um, which are individualistic in nature. And so now we are teaching the collective ideas that, of, that would be professed by people with an in, uh, as, uh, as an isolated unit in a vacuum that does not belong to any collective. And yet there are, there are beings of a collective. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's really fascinating. Um, and it's really revealing of a lot of errors that are happening in society. Anyway, sorry for take, taking so long, but bye. And I know you're thinking, look at how chunky he got, right? Uh, say bye, Kalilia. Say Un besito a Robin y al marido. Al marido and to the husband too. Bye.